I want to show you how to test for independence using conditional probability, or at least what conditional probability does to independence, basically how they're related. So let's start with the conditional probability equation. Let's start with that one. Okay, so we have this one right here. It goes probability of A, given that B already happened, it goes probability of A and B, divide that by probability of B. This is in your formula booklet. Okay, so this right here you don't have to memorize. That's in your formula booklet. Okay, maybe I'll uh, give that to you. There you go. That's the one you don't have to memorize. So start with this. That's a good idea. All right, so this means given that B already happened. Well, alternate version of it, I mean, I guess you could if you really wanted to just to rearrange this one. You could say, all right, well, I'll get probability of A. Whoops. I'll get probability of A and B together. Let me just solve for that. Do you see if I want to get this by itself? Do you see I would have to multiply this over? So I would say, ah, oh, well, that's just going to be probability of B times the probability of A and, whoops, given B happened. I mean, I guess that's an alternate version of it. I mean, you could say that. Uh, okay, so what do we do with this? Well, if two events are independent, remember I was talking to you about that before, if two things are independent, that means one event's outcome does not affect the other one. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, that means that we have this happening, right? If two independent events, we have probability of A and B happening, is just probability of A times probability of B. This is something else that we have from our formula booklet. Independent events means this. So what we can do then is we can apply this. Watch, watch what we're going to do now. So that means if I want to do this probability of A given that B happened, now keep in mind, if they're independent. So this is the key thing here. So if independent, then all this stuff right here will happen. Okay, so only if these things are independent, then you can do this. If they're not independent, then you can't say this. But if they are independent, well, that means that I'm just going to do the probability of A and B. But we just learned if they're independent, it's just probability of A times the probability of B. And now I'm supposed to divide that by probability of B. Well, looky, looky, look what happens here. These cancel out. So what do you have? You have this conclusion then that the probability of A given that B already happened is just the probability of A. That's a conclusion we can make. Okay, so this is an important conclusion. Let me put it all on one page. So uh, for independent events then, that's going to mean then that probability, I'm just going to rewrite it here because I want to compare it to something else here. It's just going to be the probability of A. That's going to be the first sort of key thing we can say here. It's this one. Um, okay. What are we going to do with this? I mean, I, I, th I think this might be a good idea is to do something else with it. Maybe we'll start with... Uh, this I'll say and we can also say that probability of let's say we wanted to do a given that not B happened this is not B okay so the probability of a happening given that B didn't happen well if they're independent events I can do the same thing right probability of a times probability of not B all that divided by probability of not B well again look these things are going to cancel out so what do I have left I end up with so probability of A given not B happened is just equal to the probability of A. That's another equation that I could state. You see that? This is kind of neat what happens, right? So we have this. So finally, if two things are independent, this is the key thing then. I can say that, uh, I'll put them maybe all together here. That means the probability of A given that B happened, if these things are independent, it's just going to be the probability of A. And that's going to be the same as the probability of A given that B didn't happen. So that would just be A, a given not B. There we go. This is it. This is how we can state everything. So I, I think this is a, a nice little neat conclusion because we can then use this to test if two things are independent. If this equals this, then those events are independent. Or you could say if this equals this, then those events are independent. So this is the key thing, I think. I'll say this. So this is the final, so sort of, this is the, the whole thing here together. So if two things are independent, a, if A and B are independent, then we have this happening. That's it. So let's see if we can do an example. So we have a fair unbiased die and it's rolled. So let's just take a look at what happens with that. Uh, if I roll a die, the sample space, U, 
is just going to be one or two or three or four or five or six. All right, this is all the different answers possible. So now we want to find out what's the probability of a five given that the number is odd. Well, you have to know what odd means. So first, let's look at all the odd numbers. Those are numbers that you divide by two and you don't get a nice number. You don't get an integer. So for example, one and three and five are the only odd numbers here. Okay, so odd. So there's only those ones. Okay, there's two and four and six. Those are even. All right, so what do I want here? I want a five given that it's odd. So watch carefully what I'm going to do now. I'm going to say, all right. Now, I don't know if they're independent yet. I can't make that statement. But what I can do is find the probability. So let's do this. I'm going to use the, the conditional probability equation. I'm going to say probability of five given that it's odd. Well, how does that equation go? If you've been working with that equation, you should know it goes probability of five and odd, all that divided by the probability of odd. Because that's how the equation always goes. It always goes the probability of the, you know, if you're doing something given something else, it's a probability that they both happened together. All right, so what's the probability that something is a five and odd? Well, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Because isn't five an odd number? So this is actually easy. How many fives are there in this whole list? Well, there's one single five out of how many total numbers? Six. So I'm just going to write this down. This is because five is already an odd number. So that means I don't have to do anything else. See, all fives are always odd, so it actually became easier. So some people get really confused by this, like, what, do I have to multiply the probability of being five and the probability of being odd? Actually, no, you just gotta think about to be five and odd at the same time. This is why this is really important, okay, this piece right here. To be a five and odd, well, all fives are always odd. So the probability of both five and odd is just the probability of a five. So this is the really important part, that one over six. All right, what's the probability of something being odd? Well, there are one, two, there's three odd numbers out of six. So really, I'm gonna do one sixth over three sixths. Let's do that. So what happens when I divide a fraction by a fraction? Do you remember? I multiply by the reciprocal. So I take this and I flip it. I make it six over three. All right, what happens then? Well, the sixes cancel out, boom, boom. I end up with just an answer of one third, uh, which is, well, it's approximately 0 0.333, if you want the significant figures. So there we go. We found our probability of getting a 5 given that it's an odd number. It's just one-third. Okay, so what does this do for us? What are we trying to do with this? Uh, well, what we can do is... Um, can I do this right? Yeah, there we go. Good. So what I'm going to do now is take a look at this. Are these two events, rolling a 5 and getting an odd number, are they independent? Well, I mean, you could answer it one way, kind of directly. You can say, I mean, are they independent? I mean, you could say no, since, uh, maybe I'll write it like this. So you can just do it with one explanation, right? You can just say, no, um, let's do it like this. Since five is always odd. So you can say it that way. That could be one conclusion. You can say that. Uh, it's a little bit lazy, but you could. You could actually do that on an exam. That would be fine. I mean, maybe a better way, so I'll say, or you could do it formally. Let's actually do the formal test for independence, just to go through and try to check. So I'm going to try to check if two things are independent. What did we just say before? If independent, what will happen? If two things are independent, probability of A given B will be probability of A. This will happen if they're independent. So let's check that. So that means the probability of, well, actually, I'll just write it like that, actually. You know what I'll do? I'll write in green. I'll say probability of A given B will be equal to just probability of A. In other words, in this case right here, the probability of, let's see, 5 given that it's odd should be equal to the probability of the first one, so probability of a 5. That should happen. Let's see if that's the case. Did we find the probability of a 5 given that it's odd? We did. Look, we did that actually above. Look, we know this. We know this. This is right here. 
probability of a five given that it's odd is actually one third. I found that from above. Well, the question is, is this equal to probability of a five? Well, what's the probability of getting a five? It's one five out of a total of six. Are these two numbers equal to each other? Because if it was independent, they would be equal to. Clearly they're not, right? So that's another reason why. So you can say so. I'll just sort of make the conclusion. So no. Sense of probability of 5 given that it's odd is not equal to the probability of a 5. Do you see? That's another way to conclude it. So this was a, an example of testing for independence, you know, formally, so to speak. So that's how I could say. Right? If these two numbers are here, they're not the same. Look, this is not equal to that. If they were, it would have worked. That's it. That's how we can use this probability uh, to test for independence, which I thought was actually kind of neat.